How are you supposed to warm up the tyres in iRacing? Across 2025, iRacing has introduced a more realistic tyre model to several cars, where tyres now start cold and take time to reach their optimum temperature. And that delta between hot and cold tyres is huge, like seconds per lap. It's so fundamental to getting pace out of the car at the start of a race or during qualifying. So why does everyone seem to do it a little bit differently? You know, there's the brake draggers of Reddit. There's the guys soaring so hard at the wheel, they're going to break something. Some people just casually waft from left to right, like they're trying to fit in. And then there's always that one guy just aura farming. And in moments like this, I always wonder, am I an idiot or is everyone else an idiot? It seems like a simple question, right? I mean, not the idiot part, but anyway, I thought it would make for a great simple video. Unfortunately, that simple question sent me down a rabbit hole of other more complicated questions like learning iRacing's weird, overcomplicated new telemetry tool, locating the brain of a GT4 driver, and worst of all, I, I had to talk to an engineer. But this is a YouTube video, and you don't have to go through all of that pain, just know that this isn't the complete engineering breakdown of how realistic iRacing actually is. If I was going to do something like that, I need a bit more time and uh, motivation. But I did find a bunch of things that contradict some of the misinformation online, and will definitely help you get the most out of the new tyres. So I took a GT3 car to Mexico. Not just because it's my favourite new track, but because the high altitude kills downforce. So you rely much more on that mechanical grip. In other words, you only go fast there if you're on a hot, slick tyre. Now, I don't love when people try to sell advice without being on the pace themselves, and I'm not a GT3 main at all. So before testing, I ran about 100 laps to get myself consistent and quick. By the end, I was hitting mid 140s pretty easily on a fixed setup, which for my I rating is kind of solid and means that I won't be talking waffle across this video. Then to make this accurate to the actual race sessions, I loaded up a GT3 fixed AI race and tested four different tire warming methods during the pace lap. If you want to see the same thing, but for qualifying or any other techniques that I've missed off, please just let me know in the comments and I might do this again. So what were the four methods that I chose? Well, number one was the Kimi which is just drive slowly, aura farm like this guy, text chat everyone to say work together or whatever you do. Number two was something I'm calling brake magic, which is just dragging the brake the whole way around the track. Some people swear by this and I think this works well on the old tire model, but what about on the new GT3 tires? Then there's number three, heavy weaving. So this is aggressively swerving from lock to lock, properly scrubbing the front tires until your force feedback feels completely numb. And lastly, number four, which is weave, brake, cool. This is what I've always done since the new tires came to the GT3s because I saw an esports guy do it once and just decided it made the most sense to me. I weave a bit, but don't scrub too much. I jab the brakes a bunch and then cool the tires through the whole of sector three. This kind of works on an assumption that heavy weaving might put too much temperature into the tire and then you struggle with overheating for the whole rest of the session. Okay, well, that's the methods for the pace lap. And here's what happened on lap one. Let's start with the Kimi. As you might expect, the temperatures drop on the out lap and we're starting really low at the start of the lap. The steering feels very light and I'm just kind of waiting for the front end the whole time, especially in the low speed sector one and the last sector, sector three. But it wasn't just poor front grip. This method actually took quite a few tries because the car kept on snapping into oversteer through turn seven and the entry into the stadium section. It was a bit of a mess and I definitely would not recommend doing this. Lap one was a 143.759. Next up, brake magic. This was a bit better, but not by as much as I'd hoped. The tire temperatures were around five degrees higher this time, and lap one did feel a bit quicker. I could actually push. The rear end was still quite lively in the high speed section, but all in all, it was a good step forward from doing nothing. So maybe Reddit was onto something a little bit, Lap one was a 142.969, seven temps quicker than the Kimi. Okay, now for the one that I was really, really interested in. This is weaving like a complete idiot. And I mean excessively, like fully turning the wheel from lock to lock like you're karting in the wet. Or your Lando Norris from my recent onboard video of him where you could see him doing this exact technique. 
The result of doing this across a whole lap was that the tyres were another 5 degrees hotter than with brake magic. But if you've ever done this before in iRacing, you know that it very quickly makes the front end feel super numb and unresponsive on the force feedback. So I always thought that this meant that it would be slow and understeering. Lap 1 was a 141.670. I was completely wrong, the car felt great as soon as I turned into turn 1 and I could attack for the rest of the lap. This is night and day compared to the first two. So now after being wrong about that, we moved on to my go-to, the weave, break, and then cool. As you'd expect, this involves weaving and breaking around the track on the pace lap, but then chilling out and doing a Kimi through the final sector, letting those surface temperatures of the tires settle. And they settled to around the same temperature as when we did the brake magic. So not good. Well, from turn one, I didn't feel that same immediate front end grip as with the pure weaving method, but the car did feel predictable. This meant that despite losing time in the first sector, I could make a lot back through turn seven and the rest of the middle sector. Lap one was 141.811. Slower than just weaving, but way faster than the brake magic technique, despite starting the lap at the same tire temperature. But why? If you only look at tire surface temperature, you're only really seeing part of the picture. Same as if you're looking at your dashboard and you're only looking at the tire pressure. Tire pressure tells us what's happening inside the tire because as the air heats up, it expands. And when we bring pressures into the story and start looking at some graphs, things get really interesting. I promise these graphs are cool and interesting. Please, please, please stay with me. Okay, here's a graph of tire data from the pace lap showing the tire pressures for all of the warm-up methods, except for brake magic. But now watch what happens when I add the brake magic method back in. Whoa. Our front tire pressures are just on their way to the moon, while the weave brake cool method actually brings the pressures back down towards the end of the lap. Flip over to lap one and you can see that brake magic holds on to those super high tire pressures all the way through, which might explain why it's about a second slower than just weaving and braking. Because heating the tires only with the brakes creates two distinct problems. First, the rise in internal pressure reduces the footprint of the contact patch. And second, a lack of direct heating to this part of the tire leaves it relatively cold and rigid. So if you just look at lap one, these are the results and heavy weaving is clearly the way to go. But unless you're like me and you crash at turn seven every other time, the race doesn't just end on lap one. So I wanted to understand if the way we warmed up the tires also affects our pace across multiple laps. Because none of these lap times that we've done so far are even close to the optimum. So for each method, I did four race laps total. For the Kimi, my pace was slowly improving across each lap with a 141.5 on lap two and my best of a 140.5 on lap four. I also think that if I did another lap, it might have been a little bit faster still, but I was kind of getting to the limit of where I believed the tire would start dropping off a cliff. For brake magic, the warm up after lap one was considerably faster. Lap two was a 140.7 and then two consecutive 140.4s. So despite a slow start, once the surface temperature came up, the lap times came down. However, those high front tire pressures would persist for all four laps, meaning the front tire temperature would also be the highest of all methods when starting all consecutive laps. It was always hot front tires. But does that mean that it was the fastest? Well, no. Lap two for heavy weaving was just as fast as brake magic with another 140.7. But after this, the times fell. Lap three was a 140.2 and followed up with a 140.15. Heavy weaving once again, giving a superior lap time. Okay, and last up is weave break cool. This was a balance of all three techniques. Lap two was immediately faster with a 140.5. And then on lap three, Hefest got this run. I was so stoked that I tried to follow up with an even faster lap, but definitely, definitely pushed too hard and ended up losing over half a second in the final sector. And for anyone wondering, this is what the tire wear looked like for each of the methods. So in conclusion, the only thing cool about aura farming on the pace lap is your tires. Definitely don't do this. Weaving hard gets the tire temperatures into the right window for lap one, so don't worry if it feels numb. Too much brake dragging kills the front tires with lots and lots of internal temperature, 
and managing the relationship between internal and external temperatures, like in the weave break cool method, means that you'll find more pace and confidence in those opening laps. And side note, unfortunately, I couldn't find any meaningful data from looking at uh, lateral Gs. I think it's mainly because Mexico really doesn't have any corners like Barcelona turn three or the final corner of Sucuba. Like I said at the start, this isn't the full picture and I'd probably want to look a bit deeper into combinations of different techniques in the future. And I just don't have enough data to make solid conclusions yet. But please give this a go in your next race and let me know if it helped. And if you want me to test other cars, techniques or scenarios, just let me know in the comments below because I'm kind of curious, does this work the same for GT4s or GTPs or any of the cars that have got the new tyre model? But just let me know.